This is Conversations with the Citizen. I'm your host, Tia Carol Jones. I'm here today with City of Harding Mayor Christopher Clark. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I am a 53-year um, resident of the city of Harvey, so I've been there my entire life. I'm 53 years old. Uh, I am a, an attorney by trade, uh, so I, I have a law degree. I also have a degree in engineering, uh, engineering, electronic engineering. Um, I am a father of two, um, a, a son, a, an uncle, you know, and all of those wonderful things that people usually do in their everyday lives. Um, I love my city. And, uh, and I'm happy to be serving it at this particular point in time. Okay. Why did you want to become the mayor of Harvey? Uh, well, I was born and raised in what I would call that old school um, type of neighborhood where you had no choice but to go get your education, come back home, and basically serve the people in your city, the people who helped to raise you, the people who poured into you, the people who gave everything that, you know, you needed to become the successful person that you may, they were hoping that you would become. So me wanting to be the mayor of the city of Harvey was a culmination of that upbringing, but also of several of the residents actually encouraging me to run over and over and over again. Um, and so after uh, listening to them and after much prayer, um, then it came to a point where I realized that that was the journey that God had put me on. Earlier this month, you outlined your safety plan for the city of Harvey. What does that plan entail, and how will you implement that plan? Okay. Well, the plan actually has already been implemented. Oh, okay. Um, so um, earlier this month when we had our public safety forum, we talked about the things that we were already doing okay. at, in the city of Harvey. For instance, we had already um, had three different um, police academies that we sent officers to so that we could hire more police officers. We've recently hired, uh, I think, 24 to 25 new officers and put them on the streets. Okay. Um, they've gone through their field training and everything that they're supposed to do as far as uh, their qualification is concerned, and they are now on the street. We've also purchased uh, 24 new police vehicles. The city of Harvey had not had new police vehicles in over 20 years. And just to give you an example of what I was dealing with when I, when I came into office, I got in one of the police vehicles and could actually see through the floorboard mm -hmm. of, the, of the car to the, the asphalt below. So we had not had those. Um, other things that we've done was the implement, implementation of body cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and we had the body cameras way before the governor even signed the mandate into law. So it was something that we were looking into, along with the, the lesser use of force by instituting um, the use of tasers as well. And so there's been so many things um, from equipment, from putting officers on the street, um, from honestly working with the community overall, um, that we have done to help to implement a, a safety program here in the city of Harvey. It's a little bit longer answer maybe, but I wanted to make sure that it was, it was clear. Sure. Um, and, and kind of, as you said, part of the safety plan includes putting more officers on the streets. How many officers does Harvey currently have? And then how many will you hire? Well, we currently, um, well, well, we currently have fifty-four. Okay. 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 But let's go a little bit back in time, because I took office in twenty nineteen, and the previous administration in twenty eighteen had laid off more than half of the police force. Okay. So that half of the police force was gone when I took office. So when I came into office, the first thing we wanted to do was start to build those numbers back up. Those numbers have a significant uh, impact when it comes to uh, overall crime in the city. So we wanted to build those numbers back up. So those numbers are now up to 54. Um, but I personally don't want to stop at 54. I'm looking for a much fuller um, um, 
police department, even though um, I am going to listen to my police chief you know, and my commanders um, as far as what they think that number should be. But as a, as a, as a mayor, I'm always willing and welcoming the addition of more police to our, to our city and to our police ranks. So, Mayor Clark, you talk about building a better Harvey. When it comes to Harvey, what areas do you think need improvement and what will it take to improve those areas? Harvey needs a, a lot of improvement. Specifically, um, first let me talk about the ones that I cannot control. Okay. And I want to I get those clear. Okay. Um, that's, for instance, our education, um, our school districts, and our park districts, and our library districts. The city of Harvey and the city of Harvey, the mayor does not control that like it, like it is in the city of Chicago. Okay. So those, but those are things that need to improve because as we're looking for single families to come and join our city and set up roots in our city, they want to have good parks. They want to have good libraries. They want to have good schools for their children. So that is a place that needs improvement. But also, um, the overall infrastructure, the things that I have more say in as the mayor, uh, the infrastructure of the city needs a major overhaul. Um, we have a, a $94 million um, project right now in the city of Harvey uh, through the state government uh, and J.B. Pritzker's office to repair our Wood Street, which is about two to two and a half miles long through the city of Harvey. That street has not been repaired since, well, overhauled since 1932. Okay. So that's 90 years. So just to show you how old our infrastructure is. So we need we need streets, we need lights, we need curbs, we need sidewalks. We need better housing. Um, we need to demolish some of the housing that we have. And you know, what really gets me is, is sometimes people think that as a mayor, I don't recognize that we have those issues. But the biggest issue that we have is money. And the simple fact is when I when I took office, I took office and I inherited a one hundred and sixty four million dollar debt. So when you're inheriting one hundred and sixty four million dollars of debt with no credit, no additional monies, it's difficult to deliver all of those things, you know, in lightning speed. But we have been able to repair lights, fix roads, once again, enhance our police department um, and our relationships with others throughout um, the state and the federal government has really benefited uh, the city of Harvey overall. Okay, so kind of just a follow-up question. You said you were you, there was a deficit. Where does the budget stand currently? Well, as far as the deficit is concerned, we're down now to $149 million okay. in, in debt. Okay. So it, it's, it's not as if you just come into the office and you say, ooh, uh, $164 million in debt? Oh, just erase that and let that go. I wish that could be done because I would have done it. But what you have to do is you have to start working on your fiscal house. So we've been negotiating with our bondholders to try to, make, to, try to get our bonds out of default because when I took office, the bonds were in default and had been in default three times. You know? We are um, working to, we worked and we have made sure that our audits were caught up uh, and current. At one point in time, the city of Harvey's audits were five years in arrears. Mm -hmm. So we're now having those, um, those audits caught up. And so getting our financial house in order is going to help us along the way as we begin to start to make some additional moves. What we really need is financial independence. We don't quite have that yet, but we do have a plan to get us there. Okay. Okay. And what does that plan look like? That plan is, well, first of all, the city of Harvey has a revenue, has a revenue problem. Okay. We don't have a spending problem. Um, you may have saw, or some of your viewers may have saw the other day that I was on uh, Chicago Tonight, the program on, on Channel 11. And we talked about the fact that the city of Harvey has a 52% collection rate for property taxes. Okay. Well, we only collect 52% of our property taxes. That's a revenue problem. We are only getting two-thirds of our sales tax. That's a revenue problem. So we need to find ways, and that's what this, this uh, 
administration is working on is figuring out ways to improve our revenues into the city of Harvey because we're not we're not overspending. When you look at it, when you look at our um, salaries, most of our salaries are honestly below the norm, and many of the people who are in I would say major positions in the city of Harvey, they're here because they understand the mission and the vision, and they buy into it. You believe the future of Harvey is bright. What is your vision for the future of Harvey? It's a very simple vision. It's a vision where you can have children and they have a, a decent place to play. They have a place to go to school and get educated. It's a place where if you're working, you can find a job in the community in which you live you know, and make a, a decent salary. It's that place, and, and when I talk about decent salary, just give you an example. So as, as, a, as a mayor, I came into the city and I found out that there were people who were making less than $15 an hour, which I did not understand how one could even begin to you know, support themselves and their family for less than that. So I made sure that we immediately increased and, and gave all of those people who led, had less than $15 an hour an immediate raise to at least 15 um, but it's a place where you know, people can have good homes you know, and they can take care of themselves and their families. One of the, the oddity, oddities about the city of Harvey is people think that it's some enigma as, as, as if we're a, a different type of people who don't deserve normal things that everyone else deserves. And the truth of the matter is the vast majority of Harvey residents are those people who are looking for the American dream, just like everyone else. And so when I look at the city of Harvey and I look at the direction that we're headed, I know that one, we can have those things. Two, we've had those things before. And three, is the people are so tenacious in the city of Harvey that they can weather any storm. And that's one of the things that makes us so great because regardless of what's going on in the city of Harvey, we produce great people. And so um, I, I'm proud of the city. I look forward to what we are going to become in the future. What are some upcoming developments for the city of Harvey? So we are currently um, working on our Harvey lofts, which hopefully within the next month or two, we should be breaking ground on that. Um, that's a 51-unit um, um, apartment complex in our downtown area. We created a, a TOD, a transit-oriented development district, uh, in our downtown area to help to support that type of um, development in our city. Um, another development that's coming, um, and just to give an example before I go into the others, that particular investment is a $19 million investment in our city, which we have not seen in such a, a long time. Um, another development is a $70 million development between Pace and Metra, where, uh, where they will be creating a unified transit station. Now, this is important because this is the first time that, um, first of all, this amount of money has been invested in the city, but second, um, Pace and Metra are actually working together on this, which is not the usual for them. It's not to say that they can't work together, but it's just not the usual. It's usually Pace is separate, Metro is separate, and that's it. But here in the city of Harvey, they'll be working together to create a unified transit station. Um, we also have a deal, believe it or not, for Dixie Square. Um, now, Dixie Square has been closed since 1978, um, and it was demolished in 2000. I had to make sure I remember um, what year, 2014. So, um, but 19 months into this administration, we, the, the city council and I were able to put together a deal for Dixie Square. So that particular um, project is called the Southland Logistics Center. Okay. And uh, so it will be able to provide jobs, um, training of course, people will get training, people will get jobs. Um, and we'll be able to provide some more of that revenue or income to the city because Dixie Square, for instance, that big footprint, that's a giant amount of property taxes that can come into
to the city to help overall. So those are just some of the developments that are, are, are coming up. I'm, I'm hoping to, I'm looking at my watch now, I'm hoping sometime this month, we'll see, um, if not this month, next month, to be an, announcing a grocery store expansion. Mm -hmm. Because the city of Harvey is a um, food desert. But we want to make sure that we, we get out of that category and start providing an area where we can eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, we tried it once before. It didn't work out. We're going to try it again. I say give us about a month, month and a half, and we should have that announcement ready to go. Okay. Okay. Um, how has your relationship been with the other elected officials when it comes to unifying around um, a common interest to get things done? Oh, absolutely wonderful. Um, one of the, the biggest um, things that we have available in the, in the Southland the South Suburban Mayors and Managers. And the South Suburban Mayors and Managers has been that, that ideal place where um, if a municipality is having an issue and other municipalities are also having an issue, they can all work and come together to, to try to solve that issue um, in a unified fashion. They can come together and create a legislative agenda. Um, and it's something that just not does not only impact, say, for instance, the city of Harvey, but it may impact all of the other communities in the Southland. Right now, for instance, we're working on the the um, LGDF, um, and that's where the the local governments get a certain portion of the state tax revenue per capita. Um, well, that impacts every single municipality. In, in the state, but also definitely in the Southland. So through the South Suburban Mayors and Managers, um, they're the ones that help to do that, and we work together with them to try to get these initiatives um, moved forward in the state. So making sure that we have one legislative agenda is very important. Okay. Okay. Um, where can people go to find out more about the city of Harvey? Um, well, that's that's what I was thinking. That's an easy question. Um, of course, you can go to cityofharveyil.gov. That's cityofharveyil.gov. That's our website. Or you can also go to the City of Harvey Facebook page. Um, so that's the City of Harvey Facebook page as well. Um, and um, you know, there's so much there that we offer also. Um, one of the most recent things we put up is a comprehensive plan. Uh, because the city has not had a comprehensive plan since 1968. And so we, through CMAP and RTA, were able to get the grant funds to do a comprehensive plan. So that's something that we're working on now. And if Harvey residents specifically want to participate, they can participate by going to cityofharveyil.gov. Okay, great. Um before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like our audience to know? Just that, you know, one is Harvey's on the rise, you know, and that rebuilding a city that has been, I, I would say, decimated the way the city of Harvey was over the past 30 years, um, because many times people want to blame the previous administration. It wasn't necessarily the previous administration. It was a culmination of bad practices and bad leadership over decades that have brought us to where we are today. But that takes time, it takes energy, and the only thing I want people to understand is that you know it also takes patience. You know, um, I'm a praying man, I'm a God-fearing man. Um, I believe that God has directed us um, in the right path, and so that's the path we're gonna continue to take. And uh, at the end of the day, I know that Harvey will be much better because of it. Okay, great, thank you so much. You're quite welcome, thank you. Remember to make plans to join us again next week for conversations with the citizens, the place where real news.